Hi, my name is James Smith, Manager of Performance Analysis at HexasNet, and I'm here today to give you a brief rundown on Foxconn's latest AM2 Plus design, the A7DA-S. This utilises AMD's recently released 790GX plus SB750 chipset combination, which you can read about in more detail on hexas.net. Uh, first on the list is uh, the ever useful power and reset buttons. Probably not that useful for most people, but the overclockers are going to like that functionality as well. Moving along, we've got a feature you don't often see on boards now, which is a socketed BIOS chip. It's quite a useful feature to have because um, one of the most common problems you'll find with uh, motherboards is uh, you try to flash the BIOS and it kills the BIOS chip. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them are just soldered on now, so you have to send the whole board back, which is a, a real pain in the backside. Um, but this obviously avoids that issue. Moving along, another feature you'll see common on uh, more and more boards today is the front facing SATA ports. It is quite useful to have because it means that when you've got a long graphics card in, which is often the case if you go for a high end graphics card nowadays, you don't find that uh, you know, two or more of the ports are blocked by the graphics card. Yeah, one of the other um, features this uh, board has that uh, not many others on the market do is um, the chassis fan headers are four pin type, not three pin type. And uh, as such, when you have the fans connected to the motherboard, it uh, maintains better control over those fans, so you end up with a quieter system. Moving on to the back of the board, where you'll find the ports, you'll find that um, the Foxconn A7DA-S is um, one of the few that actually has all three types of video output connector. You've got D-Sub for VGA, you've got DVI, which is uh, actually digital only, it's DVI-D, not DVI-A or DVI-I, uh, in addition to HDMI. So if you want to play your Blu-ray, or even if you've got some old HD DVDs kicking about, that'll uh, output OK without the copyright protection kicking in. Like a growing trend of boards today, the Foxconn A7DA-S has passively called Northbridge and Southbridge in addition to VRM calling. It's quite prominent on the board and uh, contains quite a large chunk of copper, so it should do a pretty good job. I'm sure when we run our tests we'll find out for sure. One feature on this board, which is something that's often neglected, is a decent expansion slot configuration. The Foxconn is equipped with two x 16 PCIe 2.0s, but in addition to that, you've got two x one PCI Express and two PCI. What that means is when you've actually got two dual slot PCI Express graphics cards in, you still have one PCI and one PCIe x one slot free. Foxconn clearly believes this board is um, going to be suitable for overclocking as they've equipped it with the Tiger One overclocking chip. It's the little brother of the Fox One overclocking chip which is found on their overclocking range of boards. But even so, the Tiger One should offer a decent selection of overclocking options. Cool. Moving to the back of the board, you'll notice this metal strengthening bracket. Most of Foxconn's competitors equip it with a plastic bracket, which is a lot weaker, and thus when you're changing the CPU or installing, even installing the cooler for the first time, you'll find it bows a lot more, and as such, it can decrease the longevity of the board. In addition to the large passive cooler on the top side of the board, Foxconn has seen fit to include this small heat spreader on the back side, which not only means it will cool the top of the chip, but it will cool it underneath as well. In addition, it's retained with two screws. The advantage of screws over the push pins is that it provides higher clamping pressure and as such will increase the cooling performance of whatever cooler they've employed. It's not all good on the Foxconn A7DA-S, however. One of the things that always gets my goat is when they put the auxiliary power connector for the PCI Express slots in an awkward to reach place. In this case, right next to the I.O. ports on the back of the motherboard, which means you have to traipse cables right across the motherboard to reach it. One of the things that isn't quite well planned on this board is where they've put the firewire header. Normally you'd like this to be roughly at the back of the board in the middle so you've got a choice of expansion slots where to put the expansion bracket but in this case they put it right on the edge of the board roughly in the middle so you're limited to maybe the first two or three slots away from the header where you could place it. In addition to this, they don't actually provide the firewire header cable, so in reality you end up with no firewire ports on this board unless you manage to source an appropriate cable yourself. One of the odd additions to this board, which is actually a legacy connector, is the COM header found at the front of the board. This allows you to add, assuming you've managed to get the appropriate uh, cable, an RS-232 serial port. 
I have to question the amount of users that would want this and in reality they would have been far better off using that board space to relocate one of the other headers or some other useful feature of the board to a more convenient location. In terms of the other negative points of this board, the only other thing that I could comment on, which is often the case with uh, the cheaper boards, is that the cables they provide for the serial ATA, not only do they not provide enough for all the connectors on the board, they don't actually provide latching type cables, they're just the cheaper non-latching type cables. On balance, the Foxconn A7DA-S looks like a well laid out, if somewhat slightly overpriced mainboard, but we'll reserve judgement until we've completed our full analysis, so look out for the full review on Hexus.net.